Welcome to Wilderness Free-to-Play Ultimate Iron Man series, episode 4. Uh, today's going to be a lot of melee training and just a little bit of range training. That, that's basically what this episode's going to consist of. Uh, which is pretty exciting because range training I need to get out of the way at some point. Um, but right off the bat, we're going to go straight to skeletons and see if we can try our luck at getting a bronze bar from them. Now, I have kind of trained up my melee stats a little bit. So we could kind of handle them. I mean, you can see I'm hitting pretty hard on these guys. But the problem is they also hit hard on me. <laughs> so I it does shred my food. Um, but, you know, I can at least kill them at a decent rate. First drop I get is an iron scimitar. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating because it's like I already have an iron scimitar. Uh, I would like a bronze bar much more. Uh, in case you didn't know, there's a really weird thing with these skeletons where... Only the ones with round shields actually have loot drops. It's really bizarre. Like, all the other ones have dropped nothing. They just drop bones. Only the ones with round shields drop loot in addition to their bones. I don't know if this is a bug or intended or whatever. So my basic strategy for killing these guys is to lure them over to me with a crossbow shot. And that way I'm not going to aggro any of the, the other ones that don't drop loot. So it's a pretty decent strategy. Um, there's only two spawns here out of like the six skeletons, so you have to kind of pick the right ones. Now, I'm not going to be showing every level up that I get in these videos. I'm going to probably show the big milestone levels, like every five levels, or a level that is actually useful for me to have. Like, you know, 40 defense would be Runite armor. Like, that's a milestone level in my opinion. But 27 isn't really a big deal. Um, so here I hit 25 hit points. That's kind of a milestone level, so I thought I'd include that. And this is something very exciting, our fourth genie lamp. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting, because now we're four mining. We've gotten an entire level just from XP lamps. Um, so every single XP lamp we get from now on will be worth 40 or more experience. So the next step for me is to get a new melee weapon, because this iron scimitar is okay, but I mean it is a tier 1 weapon, so it's pretty garbage. So what I did was I went around and collected some bronze bolts, and um, these will be used to lure moss giants over to a safe spot. So uh, way up in the north, a little bit past 30 wilderness, in fact it's, it's just north of the Black Chin area, there's some moss giant spawns. And uh, so what I did was I shoot a moss giant and I lure it over to one of these like little dead trees. And then I, w I tried to range it at first, but that really didn't prove to be successful. <laughs> Because uh, my range level is 1 at this time. I was, I was like, oh, I should just train range on these guys. But, of course, my hits were just atrocious with range. So I decided to just start melee flinching it. Because that worked a lot better. I obviously didn't have enough food to like actually fight these guys hand to hand. So I had to attack, go behind the tree, and wait a few seconds for the health bar to disappear. And then go and attack him again. And that's pretty much how I would do it. So the main things I really want from Moss Giants are a uh, new shield or a mithril sword. Mithril sword being highest priority because that that is so good. It is the second best weapon I can get um, without having a smithing level upgrade. So these guys take a long time to flinch. I'm not even going to show you how long. It's like probably eight minutes per kill or something like that. It, it's absurd. So <laughs> this wasn't the most enjoyable thing to do, but I, I guess the, the reason I really wanted to buckle down and do it is like if I get that sword then all melee becomes easier you know all melee training all melee combat becomes faster and more efficient to do we did manage to get our first drop here and it was law runes not the worst drop actually because I can use those to teleport to escape from PKers once I have 25 magic we also got 15 prayer from those big bones so here's kill number two now this one's a little bit more exciting because we actually managed to get a Mithril Sword, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> this is my third kill overall at Moss Giants, the second kill on my flinching trip, and I was like, wait, are you serious? <laughs> like, we got it. That was kind of the main goal right there. So that's super exciting. We can drop that terrible Iron Scimitar. Just for comparison's sake, the Iron Scimitar has 9 Strength bonus and 10 Slash bonus, whereas the Mithril Sword has 17 Strength bonus, 11 slash bonus and 16 stab so we have better accuracy in two combat styles and we also have like one or two higher max hit so it's just all in all a much better weapon i went in for an additional kill at moss giants afterwards to test out how quickly i could kill the moss giant 
And it was pretty fast, and I actually got a second Mithril Sword, which is crazy. This highly coveted weapon, I just got it back-to-back -back drops, so that was pretty nice. Now, I wanted to go and test this out on some of the round-shielded skeletons that were nearby the Moss Giants, because there's actually, like, two spawns of them. So, really convenient. And I, I noticed it's just a lot faster. <laughs> like, you're hitting a lot harder, and you're hitting a lot more accurately than you know, before, and it's, it's, it's a great weapon. I think my new max hit at this time was 5, which is pretty big, considering my previous was like 3 or 4. So, big upgrade, much higher DPS. Now, sadly, I didn't get a bronze bar from either of these two skeleton kills that I did, but it's a good test of DPS. Now, time to do a little bit something different again, and this time we're going to be doing range training. Now, this is a very tedious process, because it involves going around and picking up bronze bolts one by one uh, in this little spot where there's ghosts. So, if you don't know where this is, it's kind of between like the bandit camp and the graveyard of shadows. And there's like probably 20 different spawns of a single bronze bolt. I think one or two of them have like two bronze bolts, but still, it's, it's a very tedious process. I wanted to show just a little bit of it because, you know, there's a reason I haven't been training ranged, <laughs> and uh, this is the reason, because it's extremely frustrating and, and very slow to get the resources for it. So I just wanted to kind of back up my point of why I haven't really been training ranged. You know, I have a I have a reasonable excuse, but at this point, I want to try to get it up, because if I can get ranged up, it will be a huge advantage at some point, because the safe spot capability is just phenomenal. My current range setup is... Uh, it comprises of a crossbow and bronze bolt, so we're only getting 6 ranged attack and 10 ranged strength, so the bonuses aren't the greatest, but at least we have an option to train ranged. I'm, I'm grateful for that. The rats are pretty squishy as well, and the safe spot at the uh, east wall of the bandit camp is great, because you can just sit right outside the wall, and there's not really any issues. Book collection is pretty easy as well. As much as I wish I had an Ava's, I can't really get one <laughs> or anything like that, so... But yeah, pretty quick. I got enough bolts to train a little bit past level 3. The end game goal for range is to be able to safe spot high level monsters. For now, I'll probably be just using it to leash monsters to me. And um, at level 3, I do get a new max hit, so that's pretty encouraging for future range training. Being able to hit 2s just makes training a lot faster. Now, I did end up selling that extra Mithril Sword I got, because you can't really hold on to extra items on an Ultimate Iron Man. That's just not how the account works. So, it's it's a unique play style. You just have to, you have to take what you need with you. You cannot take extra stuff. We got 17 Wood Cutting right there. We're about to get another level 2. This is an exciting one, because it means we're getting closer and closer to our goal. So, 25 Cooking. That means 10 levels so we can cook pizzas, which is going to be just really good food for us. Great cooking XP, as well as actual good food that doesn't heal 3 health per bite. With the new Mithril Sword in hand, I wanted to kill some skeletons with a full inventory of food at my favorite spot, which is the, the mine just north of the Major Zamorak. Sadly, I didn't really get any good loot from these guys again, but we did manage to kill quite a few of them before I ran out of food, so that's pretty encouraging, I think. And uh, it's always annoying when these other guys get aggroed on you. <laughs> like, this guy just happened to walk up to me right when I finished the uh, the round shield guy kill. And, I mean, I'm taking a lot of damage, so I just kind of had to run. Here's a milestone level of 27 hit points, which also got me 31 combat at the same time. And uh, shortly after that, I got 25 attack, which is really nice, because that's about halfway to uh, wielding Addy weaponry, which, of course, won't be till a while, because I think the only Addy weapons I can get, I have to make on my own, so not that useful, but at least we get that nice accuracy bonus. Alright, it is that time of the episode where I want to talk about some of my goals, and today we're going to talk about cooking and food, since they are linked to each other. So, right off the bat, we're at rat meat phase, and this is the part where I'm cooking rat meat until 35 cooking. <laughs> not very exciting, rat meat heals 3 per bite, and uh, there's only one bite her food. Uh, once we get 35 cooking, then we can start cooking those plain pizzas, which is exciting, because those heal 14 health per pizza, and they have two bites of 7 health each, so the the duration that I can stay at monsters is going to be just so much higher, because 
we'll be able to eat a lot more. Like, literally the food is almost five times as valuable as rat meat. And uh, once we have 45 cooking, I can actually start making meat pizzas and combine the rat meat with the plain pizzas to create a food that heals 16 health, 8 health per bite. And that's going to be even better. That's pretty much the best food we can create. There is actually an option to get an anchovy pizza, which is the best food in free-to-play. But that's only from the muddy chest. And those heal um, 18 hit points per one. And they have two bites of 9 health each. So it's really, really powerful food. But I actually cannot cook it. I have to get it from the muddy chest. Um, which, if you're not aware, the muddy chest is in the lava maze. You have to get a muddy key from a chaos dwarf. Bring it all the way in the lava maze. Unlock the chest to get a whole bunch of loot. And one of those items of the loot is the anchovy pizza. I probably won't do that until I can make use of the mithril bars that I get. Because it will kind of be a waste to use those keys before then. So the final option is to get swordfish from bandits. And there's a few special bandits in the bandit camp that drop noted swordfish. Five at a time. And I've considered the option that I could go unnote them at Edgeville Bank. It's technically, I, I, it is an NPC interaction, so that's why I'm kind of hesitant to do it, because it kind of breaks one of my rules, but, ah, eh, I don't know. But we'll have to see how it goes. If I get a bunch of noted swordfish, like 100 or something, maybe then I'll allow myself to do it. Um, perhaps I could set myself some long-term goals that if I fulfilled them, then I get access to being able to unnote items like that. And I think that would be a cool goal to kind of spice up my account in the late game, just so it has some different content. <laughs> All in all, I'd say I made some pretty good progress in this episode. Killed a lot of skeletons, got a mithril sword, did some range training, so I'm pretty happy with the results. We, we got a lot of progress done, especially that mithril sword. It's just such a good item for training. But that's all the time I have today for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed watching, and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.